Are you in the process of trying to set up an FTP server to be able to access your files remotely over the internet, but confused with network terminology like port forwarding, public IP address and private IP address? Well, I'm about to make that a whole lot easier. G'day, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. About a year ago, I released a video on how to set up FileZilla Server 1.0.1 and since then I've received a lot of questions about port forwarding and how to access your FTP server over the internet. In today's short tutorial, we're gonna cover off all of those topics, how to set up port forwarding, how to set up your firewall to be able to access your FTP server over the internet and the difference between your public IP address and your private IP address. Let's get started. At this point, I'm going to assume you've already followed my guide on how to set up FileZilla Server 1.0.1. .1. If you haven't, Pause this video, I'm gonna put a link on how to set that up up the top and also down in the description. Once you're done there, let's continue on. For this example, I'm using an ASUS router because it's probably one of the more popular examples people use at home. We're gonna click on WAN and we're gonna click on virtual server port forwarding. Now this is gonna slightly vary depending on the version of firmware you've got and also depending on the brand of router you're using. We're gonna add a profile. We're gonna give this a friendly name. I'm gonna call this FTP Connect and we're gonna leave it at TCP. Our external port is the port I want people to be able to connect to. Now, it's a good idea not to use port 21. So for this example, I'm using 2121. Internal port is 21 because that's what we set up on our FTP server by default. Now we need to be able to tell it where to translate port 2121 from outside on the internet to port 21 locally on our network inside of our home. So I'm gonna use my static IP address that I assigned to my FTP server. It's very important that you have a static IP address on the computer that you're hosting your FTP server. Otherwise, every time you turn your computer off and turn it back on, your router is going to assign it a new DHCP address and that starts to get really confusing. We're gonna click OK, leaving source IP blank. Now we need to set up the port ranges for our passive mode and we're gonna click add profile. We're gonna call this one FTP passive. We're gonna leave it at TCP. External port for me was 50,000 to 51,000. And in this particular model of router, it's separated by a colon. So 51000. Internal port, we leave that blank because that just translate 50,000 to 51,000 straight across to 50,000, 51,000. Notice the optional comment there. Then once again, we're gonna point that to our FTP server. So for me, 10.0.10.11, and we're gonna leave source IP address blank. Gonna click OK. Now we have those two rules there. It's important that we go and click this on button here to be able to enable port forwarding. I can't click that because I'm using an emulated version of the iOS. Once we've done that, we need to set up our firewall rules. Clicking on our Windows Start key, we wanna type allow app and it's going to bring up this option here to allow an app through Windows Firewall. You may already have a rule set up for your FTP server so just scroll through and have a look. I've already set one up but we're going to remove it for the point of this. So click on change settings. I'm going to remove and then I'm going to allow another app. We're going to click browse and we're going to navigate to where we installed our FTP server in my case, I'm using FileZilla, so I'm gonna click on FileZilla-Server. We're gonna click OK. I'm gonna choose Network Types, and I'm just gonna allow it on public and private. That is fine. I'm using my internal home network, so it's irrelevant. I'm gonna click Add, and then we're gonna make sure it's there, and we're gonna click OK. Now we've allowed FileZilla to be able to talk to the internet through our router. Otherwise, Windows Firewall would be blocking it and stopping that traffic from coming through. Now we're going to check our public IP address on our FTP server. So we're gonna click on Google and we're going to type what's my IP and it's gonna return back to you what your public IP address is. Don't worry, that's not my real IP address. I'm using a browser VPN just to hide that so I can show you an example. Make sure if you are running a VPN, you wanna turn it off on that machine. Also note that if your ISP doesn't allow you to have a static IP address, you may have to use other applications to be able to translate your dynamic IP address to a domain name or something similar so that you can access it on that same address every time. That's not gonna be covered in this video. I'll do another video on how to set that up at another time. 
Now working from a computer on a remote network, for me, I'm using my mobile device for a external internet connection. We're going to open up our FTP client software. For me, I'm using WinSCP. One, I like this piece of software, and two, it demonstrates that you don't need to use the same version of software that you're running on your server. You can go ahead and use FileZilla or any of the other FTP applications on the internet. We're gonna create a new site. We're going to select FTP. We're gonna enter in our public IP address that we looked up on our FTP server. We're going to put our port of 2121 because that's what we set on the router where the FTP server is. And we're gonna enter in our username. Be aware that on most FTP servers, this is case sensitive. I'm gonna leave the password blank because it helps with troubleshooting. If you don't get prompted for a password, you know you've got network connection problems. Check your IP address, check your firewall rules, check your router config. If you do get prompted for a password, you know you've got a connection, and if it gets denied from there, you know you either got your username or your password wrong. And there we go, we're prompted for our password. Enter that in, and we're connected to our FTP server. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you've liked this, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'll try and help you out the best I can. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.